Welcome back, everyone. This is theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. And I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is, is Seamus Dunn, who's the vice president of cloud and data center, hybrid cloud. You're the guy, you're in Ireland. We're just talking about Ireland. Um, you do a lot of traveling. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. So, um, um, I'm actually writing a blog post here, I just posted one earlier, but this, th the title of this blog post that's about to go out is called Hybrid Cloud is a Way of Life. And that's sourced from um, Scott Weller, um, Craig Nunez, David Scott so far, I just saw Antonio Neri in the, in the hall as well, um, just chatted with him from the server group. It's all coming together in the cloud. Um, big data and the cloud are the two big uh, exhibits, the showpieces up there, uh, it's where all the action is. Yeah. Um, so tell us. What's going on with you and the hybrid cloud? Tell us uh, what your role is and what you're up to. So, so we're, we're, we're doing a number of things uh, that largely in our services business, we've been focused in the data center, capturing that data center. We have pretty well known, pretty high enterprise grade support experience in the data center. And in fact, you'll hear today, we're doing a lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of like flexible capacity service, where we're taking like public cloud uh, uh, agility or flexibility and we're using some financial instruments and some service capabilities to give you that flexibility in your own data center. But we're also then thinking about and hearing a lot from customers about why is it so difficult to go to the public cloud? A lot of people are doing it, but there's a hesitancy, particularly for enterprises, because it's a little tricky to get set up, but even when you do get set up, it's pretty easy to consume it. So it's a good experience, you get all the agility, all the business benefits, the lower cost, and, uh, but it's not so easy to manage. What is the big, it's not easy to govern. What, is the biggest, what are the biggest issues you hear with customers? Because there's no debate cloud is here, um, way beyond the hype cycle here. We're into, we're into real architecture, no more POCs, no more tire kicking, real deals are going down on-prem, and then hybrid, and then obviously public, whoever you know kind of segmentation by now. But what are the real issues that you're finding with customers? And, and what specifically makes hybrid cloud different from some of the things that say Amazon Web Services is dominating the field on, on the infrastructure as a service market, which is a completely different use case. So uh -huh. compare and contrast and talk about the differentiation between a public cloud and then the hybrid and private. So the, the thing that most customers say to us is, help me. You know, that, that really, there's, it's, it's, it's early stage. It's, I can put some workloads out on a the, on the public cloud and it's a great thing. I, I, I love the public cloud vendor you just mentioned and a, and a number of others like around. It's a, that's a good thing, but what they're saying is, I, I got to use that sometimes, I got to stay on premises sometimes. Sometimes I really want to take it off premises, but there's latency and security, I don't want to put that workload off. So help me manage and figure out what my strategy is, first of all, but even when I put it in place, help me if something's going to go wrong. It's actually, stop things from going wrong, to stay with me. Uh, that's the sort of help they're looking for. When we say hybrid cloud support, to us that's, we're going to help you with your public cloud. We already are leaders in helping you in your data center. And really what we're doing is we're putting that whole known enterprise grade help and support for you together into one package right across every deployment in a hybrid cloud. So Meg Whitman said, we build it, we back it, and we service it. Okay, she said so it take well. us through that. So you make cloud, so now you guys are cobbling together. So I don't say cobbling together. It sounds like it's like, a, you know, <laughs> you put stuff together, you can, you can modulize it very much multi-vendor, and unlike Amazon, you can, although you can cobble that together, you, bat, you, you make the cloud for the people, yep. okay? And you back That's it with fact. service and support, um, and uh, you service it when they need help. Yep. So take me through the help me in each phase, making it, uh, backing it, and servicing it. Yeah, so if we take on premise, we're, you know, we've come a long way with that and you'll, you'll probably see from some analysts that in the private cloud space on your premises, HP is in a leadership position. We have a long-standing support capability to help you with your strategy right through the life cycle. Deploying it, develop your strategy, putting it in place, supporting it, and we've built up centers of excellence and experts around our on-premise cloud system. 
we also have our public cloud team who are developing an enterprise grade public cloud. And what we're really doing as a next step is unifying that help and support experience. We're going to take what our public cloud team do and we're going to look at the tools and instrumentation they use and then we're going to integrate that with our current centers of excellence for, for on-premise cloud support. And we're going to make that feel like one experience for you. And even though it's different deployments and different hybrid IT, we're going to be able to help you manage it, govern it, support it, prevent it from falling, knowing which workloads to, to put on the cloud, knowing when to take them back, knowing how to manage that whole thing. So we have a known on-premise data center, enterprise level support capability. And really what we're doing here is the next step is taking that known experience for our enterprise customers and bringing it to the public cloud. I mean, too. you're essentially describing what a lot of people talk about as the cl cloud broker model, right? Um, should, you, should you talk about, first of all, confirm or deny that? What does that sort of cloud broker you know, concept mean to HP? And, and specifically, what does it mean for a customer? Yeah, I, I would say a cloud broker is like one little element of what I'm trying to describe. It is certainly an element of cloud brokering. Broker by its nature is saying, you know, I'm kind of an aggregator. I'll, I'll, show, I'll give you the different options and I'll recommend one for you. And there's an element of that. And then I'll get out of the way. And that's not what you're way. talking about. No, okay. I, we're talking about a relationship. We're going we're to stay with you. What we're finding a lot of customers say is that I can get to that, I can find a broker, I can make my choices. I like help with my strategy. But what a lot of people are saying to us is, I would move faster in the cloud if I had somebody with me for when something happens. Or that, would give me some advice before it happens. I need so that it this, doesn't happen. So that it doesn't, yeah, <laughs> prevent it, you know, yeah, yeah. prevent problems. But it's, it's basically exactly what we do in our data center, for, in, in the data center for customers today. This, this is exactly what we do. And they're saying, we don't have anybody that does that for us with a public cloud experience, yet it's a hybrid world. But why is that different? I need somebody that's going to give me uh, a support, be there for help, have the expertise, be able to understand each of the different deployments in a hybrid model, and be able to help me in a way I know. Plus, you'd be one person. You know, I don't want to have to, we've already found in a data center the way it's scaled out, both up the stack and, and across with different vendors, that they, they had so many people they wanted to call in the data center. I got to call my software guy, my hardware guy, my other hardware guy. It's like, we, we've already found with data center care for the last two years, we've almost 2,000 customers that are really just love the service. And it's really saying we're, we, we have the expertise right across the data center, not just with our converged infrastructure, not just with our software. Um, we're, we're really saying we're going to do that for you and include all of the hybrid elements. We're going we're to help you in the same way with the public cloud. That doesn't have to be a separate thing where you, know, you go and do that separately. We're going to bring our expertise to bear for that. What kind of skill sets are you bringing to bear to, uh, to help customers solve this problem that perhaps you, you, you didn't have in your portfolio five years ago? Uh, that, that, that's a great question, because that's the, 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 the nub of the matter. Uh, the, the first thing we're doing is working with our public cloud team. They have their support centers, and when you go to, to them and, and they speak with their customers, the ecosystem that they interact with, what the, their customer systems admins do, uh, is very different to a private cloud or an on-premise cloud. They, they monitor the NOC and they uh, provision and move workloads in a different way. They need to talk with different partners in the whole cloud ecosystem in a different way. Uh, there's certain instrumentation that we're working on now with, um, with our public cloud team and that's where we want to make sure the experience is best with HP's public cloud. Later we'll move on to the other uh, uh, service providers besides HP. Um, but, but the different capabilities are really around the type of help that the systems administrators and IT managers our customers have need. They're saying, I, I, I'm, I'm an expert in my data center, but I don't know how to administer this public cloud. I don't know how to, I don't know how to even monitor the performance of my application. If I don't think it's right, I don't even know how to, to monitor it and see it. Uh, I'm not sure who to call. I'm not even sure if it is a public cloud thing. Maybe I should move that workload back in. If I do, what'll happen? Uh, so we're bringing both test and instrumentation to bear on that, and also training and expertise. So we're taking our private cloud experts, we're sitting them down in Austin with our public cloud team, and we're commingling them so they can develop that set of ex expertise when they get a first call. And then we'll route it in the right way. So was that? Yes, absolutely. It? So and then, uh, same, similar question for the customer. So you got cloud, which is you know, more agile, in theory simpler, 
you got all this converged infrastructure coming in, so you're reducing the amount of hardcore heavy lifting that IT people have to do. So how are their skill sets changing? And, and it sounds like you're doing some knowledge transfer. Are, are, you, are you seeing customer skill sets changing? Or is there you know, explicit training and deliberate training going on? Are they moving fast enough in your opinion? The, 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 they're, they're moving, but they're not moving fast enough, but it's more because whereas the consumption of your cloud services is easy and simple and gives you the flexibility and the agility you want. The management aid. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's not it's not unlike what we saw, you know, when virtualization really took off, yeah. you know, a decade ago. Uh, how to manage that, you, you, get, you got the great benefits, you got flexibility, agility, you got all the total cost of ownership benefits, but you, you also got a gift of complexity and people said, help me. And we did see a lot of those you know, smaller organizations set up as like kind of managed services guys who've died off. And we're seeing a sort of a same trend here with the public, public cloud. It's like, wow, the benefits are superb. Uh, but there's all this sort of complexity and stuff I didn't expect, and it worries me. And it's causing me to move slower because I want to be cautious. And mostly, if you're going to move a critical app to your enterprise, to the public cloud, even if it's looking good and, and you can use it well, you kind of have in the back of your mind, what if something goes wrong? Is my service provider going to help me in the right way? And the, the answer is, mm, not most of them don't. Uh, and it, 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 the fact is it's a hybrid cloud. I'm not, I'm not really managing it separately. I'm managing my, my IT uh, as one, as a, as a hybrid model. And I'm trying to deliver the same service level to my business. And uh, I think there's that hesitancy moving to the public cloud. I think it would move faster if they had a trusted partner with them that would say, that's the one guy I'm going to call. If I get into trouble, it's them, and they're, they're advising me all the way, people will move faster. We're convinced of that, and that's what people tell so, us. So, Seamus, where are you having success? Maybe give some examples, um, you know, maybe specific you know, types of customers, or if you can name customers, that's fine. I understand if you can't, but, but share with us some sort of proof points. Uh, <clears throat> we've, we've uh, we, we talked about this a uh, number of months ago, and we said we'll, we'll run a, a pilot, maybe you could call it, with, with some customers. The first thing we did is we said, let's make this work well where HP is successful today with our, with our private cloud offering. So we took the, the thousand or more customers we had with cloud system who were using it successfully, and we looked at them. Then we looked at our, our HP public cloud customers, and we, we, we've been doing some pilots with, both, with, 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 a, with a, a select group of, of customers in a few different segments. Um, I, I can't really name customers, because yeah, you know, sure. that... Uh, you blow the deal. But, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, what, what's been interesting is a number of those customers from financial services to, to manufacturing and, and news media, uh, they've, they've wanted to be engaged with this because they recognize that if, if, if HP could do this, this would really help me. And be, they, they, they know that because we're already delivering an on-premise uh, solution and experience and relationship with them through data center care and cloud system. And we see what they're doing with a public cloud where it's the public cloud for the enterprise. So if they can marry all that together, we'd love to see how that works. It'll, it'll give us confidence to move forward. Uh, that's the real proof point that we're seeing. And, um, you know, it's great when you have customers that really want to, to test it out with you. So we're seeing a few things, mostly on the skills and tools instrumentation that we're, we're refining. And uh, that we're, we're pretty happy with where we are right now. I mean, we're ready to go out with this. Right now, it'll really just be with HP's public cloud customers. And then we're, you know, in the next number of months, going to expand our partnerships with some of the other biggest server, service providers. What's the, what's the biggest mistake you see people making um, when they start embarking down a, a cloud journey? Well, I, <laughs> I think it's, it's classic. You, you, you probably know the answer. It's, it's like taking the time to have the right strategy in the first place. Which workloads, when, for what reasons, which service provider. It's, it's uh, fire ready aim. You know, it's, right. that's, that's, the, that's the, key, the key mistake. I think there's also many who are like pressured into moving along with the cloud, go for some big names, move workloads out, and then really haven't thought it through and discover, wow, there was a problem, it didn't quite work, and discover I, I really don't have the relationship, I don't have the partnership. So when it goes wrong, it's, it's uh, you know, even if it's a small problem, but there's been some bigger outage type problems, and I think the mistake we see is really 
you didn't really think through the strategy in the first place. So taking the time to have the right strategy in the first place, and then who's going to help you as you implement and deploy on that journey. Uh, we see quite a number of customers who really regret some of the moves they've made, which is causing hesitancy for them, of course. You know, th those experiences make you think twice. Well, you've got the advantage of a full value chain. You've got the infrastructure, you've got the cloud, you've got the services, you can sort of package that all up and mix it and match it. Um, it's early days for the cloud, particularly the public cloud, so there's a big gap between sort of going from test and dev where you're you know, a developer and you can provision infrastructure to actually you know, putting mission critical apps in the, in the cloud. But do you think over time, I mean, it would seem that, that market forces would dictate that an ecosystem would develop whereby uh, third party providers are sort of mimicking what you're doing for the public cloud. Do you see that emerging yet? Will you actually affect that outside of sort of HP's own sandbox? Yep. Have you thought about that and, and what, what's that Yeah, we've like? thought about we've thought about that a lot and it's a great question. There's a couple of things, you're, you're right. We have the full value chain. We've got assets and industry leading assets right across that value chain. On premise, we can give you public cloud dynamics, which are private cloud, because of our financial services teams. Yeah, and our could, services teams. So it, right? we, we really have have it, it, it all, and you know, we're in a lucky position. And we're going to take advantage of that because that is a huge benefit to customers. But there are players already who are taking one aspect of hybrid cloud de de uh, 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 deployments and they're building expertise and partnerships around either the public cloud. You mentioned brokers earlier. There's also managed service providers and uh, um, consultancies that are being built up, and there's a large ecosystem being built up around that, especially on the public cloud also in a private cloud, but they only address pieces. Now we'll partner with some of them. HP is nothing if we're not a partnering company, it's like it's in our DNA. Mm. So we'll be selective about who we partner with, both, um, uh, 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 both service providers, um, instrumentation and tooling to generate our IP. Um, our channel is key to us, so there's partners that we will work through and with to deliver our services. So yeah, it's, there's different elements of an ecosystem being, up, being built up. We're selective about who we want to engage with us on that, but we want to leverage our, our broad asset base. It's, th there really isn't anybody that has the assets that Hewlett Packard has right across every element of a hybrid cloud, uh, a set of hybrid cloud deployments. And when we, you add in our services divisions and our services capabilities, both consulting and support, the managed services with ES, HP software's asset. There's nobody that really has that breadth. And we need to, we need to put that together, because re that's really what people want. That's really what customers are demanding from us. Somebody to help us with, with, with every aspect of this in some consistent way. So when you um, sell an engagement, who are you typically talking to? Are you going at the CIO level, is it the Head of infrastructure? Is it the head of applications? Combination? That, that's another great question. And obviously, you know, the what we're finding is, and, and again, to our advantages, you you have to deal with all of the above. Yeah. So we're in a number of deals right now, both with our flexible capacity service, our data center secure service, and our hybrid cloud support service. And the, we have to talk to the technical the VP of IT. You know, with this, the technical solution has to be right. But we're also talking to the CFO, because this is very much about the financial model. He wants agility. Uh, or, or the CIO is also, he, he wants agility. He wants to be able to service his business. The CFO is looking at total cost of ownership. A lot of people want to attract it to the OPEX model versus CAPEX, the big investments. So you, we really can't close the deals we're talking about unless we have a conversation with the technical resources, with the CFO and his team, with the CIO and his team or her team, and uh, then the purchasing guy to close the deal who, you know, he, he has his tasks about what the contract should be because we're talking about engagements over a life cycle. So the, the answer is all, all of the above. Yeah, and so, so the, I'm going to come back to the CFO. That's, so the interesting thing you mentioned, I think you call it your flexible capacity service. service. Yeah. yeah, so that's interesting to me because, you know, in, in theory, on paper, you would always say, think anyway, that renting is more expensive than owning. But the one gotcha is the fact that I, when I own, I have to over provision to That's worry right. about peak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did somebody say? Scott Weller said, I got to build the cathedral for the holiday or you know, for <laughs> yeah. Christmas yeah. or something. So uh, he uses that analogy. So that was good. Uh, but, but your flexible capacity service knocks that delta down, 
right? So basically, essentially, what you, you do is say that, that owning is, is ultimately going to be cheaper than renting, is what that does. Is that right? Am I understanding that right? You know, I, I don't think it's as simple as that, and it, it's interesting because when we're having the conversations about public cloud or public cloud dynamics and financials, but on-premise, uh, depending on the folks I just talked to, they, 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 they don't get the nuances or not. This, most of the CFOs we talk to get it pretty fast. Um, it's not just, is that cheaper than this cheaper? Because first of all, it's cheaper right now, but it depends on what you do next. How clear are you on what you're going to do six months from now? Because if you're really making a CapEx investment, it, it may feel cheaper now, but not so much in six months. You make it a, 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 and with FCS, it's not just a rental decision, it's like, it's a service. We're, we're supporting, managing, guiding for you. We're making each decision. Sorry, as I'm saying renting is the public cloud. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's okay. the rental model, oh. Oh, 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 right? Owning would be the on-premise or hybrid model. But true, the true, gotcha true. in the on-premise model is that capacity delta by over-provisioning. Oh, yeah. That, right? that, so that, if that, I have to over-provision by 2x, then my owning oh. savings, if you will, goes out yeah. the window. It's not worth the CapEx, so, but the FCS, you know, allows you to say, we're going to match demand with supply yep. to the extent that you can provision and charge back, and, or charge, yep. and manage, you should, in theory, be compressing that gap and with FCS, almost always be less expensive than a rental option, i.e. public cloud option, I mean, unless you're just gouging customers. Yeah, over, the over, over a term, over a, over a certain term, that's, that's for sure. But, but you get a, there's, there, you just described one of the keys to FCS. There's others. The, the speed of acquisition that you can add, capacity, we've got a contract. By joint agreement, we monitor the performance and the utilization, and then trigger capacity ads. The whole procurement cycle's changed. You know, it's a joint decision making in a contract that's a service arrangement. So you've changed your whole procurement cycle too. Um, the, 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 the assets can be flexed down too. So, so it's, it's a hard concept for people to understand. So I, I can have assets owned by somebody else on my premise, and when they're not utilized, I don't pay for them? That's, that's like, wow, that's cool. That's, that's not, it's so not it's as not flexible. it's not unidirectional. Yeah. It's not just once you add, you're stuck with adding. You can, you can subtract. Exactly, and, and we refresh it. You know, we'll, you, you've always got the latest gear. Uh, you've always got the best gear. It's been managed and designed to go together. It's, there, there's a multitude of advantages to, to FCS. Yeah, great when, when you want those dynamics that you get with a public cloud, but I really can't take it off my premise. It's, it's industry leading to us. Excellent. So. All right, Seamus, we got to go. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. And uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. We're live from HP Discover. This is day one. I'm Dave Vellante with John Furrier. This is theCUBE. Cube is a live mobile studio. When we bring it to events and we say we extract the signal from the noise, what we do is we get the absolute best guests that are at those events, we bring them inside the Cube, and we talk to them, we have a conversation. We really want to make it fun, exciting, but more importantly, extract the data from the guests and extract that metadata and share it with the world so people can use that information to better themselves, better their companies, more importantly, connect with other people to do more business, to find more about the technology. And for us, this is the future. Uh, I watch many of the uh, the Cube interviews when you're handling other events. Oh, good. And uh, you know, it's both the combination of enjoyable and insightful. And it, you know, what I like is the uh, interactive banter back and forth. Plus the fact that uh, you know, when I think about some of the conversations we have, they're not only deep, they're not only rich, but the audience themselves will really come to benefit from those conversations. When organizations bring the Cube to an event, it just brings a whole new dimension. It adds a texture of not only independence but also explodes content from their community into a much, much broader community. We tend to reach about 10 times the audience that's live at an event. So we're a big data-driven organization. Um, we have a data science team that allows us to see not only what's uh, trending broadly uh, with the public, but what's tre trending in very specific areas in our specialty in tech. Uh, that allows us to vector our analysis and, and relevance uh, from our research and journalist team into everything that we do as a media company. And really the benefit of theCUBE is 
place for conversation, for people to connect with each other and, and to learn about things. And uh, it's a revolution in, in media. We look at the technology and the people behind it as tech athletes. Those are the folks making the companies, making the technology, really creating the new value in this modern era. And it's fun, it's exciting, and more importantly, it's very social. The Cube does an excellent job of taking a very, very, this very, very broad platform and format and giving visibility to a very broad audience on each of the different uh, key aspects of the technology and it's a, it's a great environment for the, the broader community who couldn't be here today have visibility into what we're doing, what each of the tracks are and what are the sort of the core trends that are associated inside of Hadoop and giving a very balanced view from multiple dimensions around and I think that's invaluable for the community. We always know that your view is right until you hear a different perspective. So you're always interested in give me some neutral perspective, help me see it from a different uh, light, right? And maybe ask a hard question or two that I might not have considered. And, you know, in that sense, right, that independent right, uh, uh, voice, that uh, always ability to, right, have, uh, you know, sort of ind independent, audited sort of perspective, right, of the world, it's always just good. So these guys bring an incredible uh, wealth of knowledge from their own careers. They've been into a lot of different things in the industry. And uh, they're independent, you know, they're able to bring different points of view. And, you know, sometimes they ask really tough questions, too, the kinds of questions that maybe you don't want to answer. And so, uh, but it always gets to the heart of it, and we just love having them here. It's about connecting with people, and that really is what it's all about. Having the conversations in a very social, collaborative way, and that's what makes it so exciting. And people are watching. I think it's extremely valuable, also, and the, the independent parts, right? So they're, so they're not biased by having a... Uh, a sponsored kind of relationship for the specific segment so that there is no it essentially leads to a kind of more of an unbiased conversation and also leads to like kind of like the no questions were left unasked any question can be asked because I'm not gonna ask you the question that might look you bad or might make you look good the value of an independent news organization at an event is that it allows our audience to have a perspective that's balanced that it's not just you know the vendors talking to them it's the community, it's analysts, it's technologists, it's customers, practitioners. So they get a full perspective that's unfiltered. Well, the thing is, you know, you need a unbiased view. And, and even though we're in the middle of the EMC forum and the EMC event, it's clear that this team has a view across the landscape competitively beyond EMC. So for people looking in to hear from, you know, un unbiased hosts like that and be able to ask the tough questions, the probing question I think is valuable to, to all the people in technology space. Um, I, I, I want folks out there to understand the depth of technical inspection that goes on with, with you guys. It's, uh, it's deeper than you know, most analysts we talk to, right? I mean, so we roll up our sleeves. We'll spend a half a day on a hot new technology instead of the you know, PowerPoint eye bleed that goes on you know, a lot of the time in our industry. So it's, uh, you know, it's, when you get a perspective from the Cube, that is, uh, you know, that's as good as a validation. So the Cube has been called the ESPN of tech, and really our vision is to cover every event that's out there. We really truly want to be a global organization that is at every event, extracting the signal from the noise, being on the ground, giving our audience a sense of what's happening at that event, but also providing analysis and insight worldwide, literally, for every event that's out there. Going to Disneyland. Going to Disneyland. Yeah. I mean, these guys are great. Um, I think this is a revolutionary forum. Uh, up till a few years ago, I'd never seen this in my entire career.